Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Material Science. Uh, today we're going to go over uh, Miller planar indices again. Uh, this is the second uh, video. and I'm going to cover some special cases here with you so that uh, you have a little better understanding of the, the weird things that can happen when you're working with these problems. So uh, right here I have our values thrown in here for A, B, and C. And you'll see that over here A is infinity. Let me make that infinity a little bit better. So you've got infinity, B, and C. So we want to go ahead and plot these and find the Miller indices. So with this, this is fairly simple to get the, uh, the value out of it. You go ahead, take the magnitudes, the, val the magnitudes of each variable, one, one, just like this, just like we've done before. And when you take the reciprocal, the reciprocal of infinity is zero. Hopefully you know that. One, one, uh, you use parentheses since this is, these are planar indices and you've got zero, one, one. Okay. So what this says is the plane does not intersect X, it intersects Y and Z. Okay, so over here looking at our plane, if we've got an intersection at Z of one and an intersection at Y of one and it never intersects X, that means it has to be parallel to X. So basically you can draw a plane from here to there to there to there. And you'll see that this plane, if you extend this out to infinity, never touches x because the Miller indice of x is zero. Um, in my previous video, I may have had uh, in plotting it, I may not have mentioned that when you plot the planes, you actually use the Miller indice, which is different from both the direction and the point Miller indices where you use the values up here. Um, you could, I suppose, you don't have to. I like to use the Miller indices right here because it intersects X at zero or zero as in never. Or you can look at infinity as in it will intersect X at infinity and then Y at one and Z at one, uh, which will give you the idea that the plane has to extend to infinity and never touch X. So whichever uh, mental model works the best for you, go ahead and use it. You can say, oh, intersects X at zero, that can never happen. Um, so, or intersects X at infinity, and that means you'll never see it in my unit cube here. So whichever works for you. So now, imagine if we had a cube, if we had X, Y, and Z, and you were given a value, get my new cube system set up down here, of zero. This means that the plane See, this, this is not the Miller indices, this is just the value, the value of magnitude of A, B, and C on these uh, cubes where A, B, C. If you had a zero in any one of these values, that means the plane would intersect the origin right here. That cannot happen. Miller planes cannot intersect, don't intersect, intersect origin does not happen make sure you remember that if you have a zero in the original values of a B and C you have to uh, play around with the system a little bit to make it work because you would have a plane basically if you had this with like one one we'll say uh, one is simple something like this then you would have a plane intersecting y at one, z at one, and x at zero. You'd have a plane something like this. Well, here, let me, let me redraw this. Start with a fresh system here. Start with whole new values, ignore this. Zero was to make a point. Let's say x prime, y prime, z prime. Start a new chart here. And let's say we've got negative a, infinity y, and C. Okay. Okay. Infinity, infinity, and one. Okay. So these were the original values zero, infinity, and one. Sorry, I had to get my bearings there for a little bit. Basically, what you would get with this is you'll always intersect Y at zero. You'll end up with a plane. If you go through the whole process of this, you'll end up with a plane like this. The one right there. Right now it intersects the origin. That cannot happen. A plane can never intersect the origin. 
So what you can do is you can take the origin and you can scoot it over here. You can move the z-axis over here and the y-axis over here. And you can actually use this with the other indices as well as a trick to make some of the calculations a little easier. But we'll call this uh, plane uh, the prime plane. So we'll call this x prime, y prime. And these are the values right here. You cannot move the plane, but you can move the axis system that the plane is referenced from. And when you do this, you'll see that you've adjusted how it all works out. If we go ahead and solve this out, 0, infinity, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, you'll end up with a taking the reciprocals of that. You'll end up with negative 1 in Miller indices. Hang on, my paper's not adjusting right. With Miller indices, a 1 a negative is always denoted as a bar above the number. 0 and 1. And these are your planar indices. And you can look at this. Reference to this plane, x intercepts at negative 1, y intercepts at 0. Immediately on the 0. No, sorry. I just broke my own rule earlier talking about the, the planar indices. Never intercepts y, 0, or infinity. Never intercepts y, reference from this plane. And intercepts z at 1, right here. So never intercepts y, has a negative 1 on x, and a 1 on z, reference from this system. Just like that, and you have your plane, and it's not intersecting the axis system, as it was previously with this one. And if you solve this one out, you'll see that it's intersecting right here. All right, let's take this a little one, one step further here just to make sure it's totally clear since I've kind of been stumbling. What if you moved the z-axis system up to here and you've got z, y, and x? Same plane, moving the axis system up here. What you'd end up, we'll call this uh, the double prime axis, double prime x double prime, y double prime, z double prime. What, what you'll end up for the Miller indices of that are 1, 0, 1. And you should see how that is. x, reference from x, negative 1. Reference from z, negative 1, x negative 1, or x 1, z negative 1, and y, it never intersects. Hope that's all clear. Uh, just practice with it a little bit. Uh, run through these three examples again. Uh, the values are right if I've been stumbling over them a little bit. Um, and that should get you clear with the Miller indices. Again, as I stated at the beginning, as I stated right now, when you're plotting these, whichever values you do or how you think about it is totally up to you. Whether you think of zero of the planar indices as zero means it never intersects that axis, okay, in the Miller indices, okay, fine. Or if you want to work backwards or work from this, you say, well, it would intersect it at infinity, which means it'll basically never intersect it. Whichever mental model works the best for you, go ahead and use that.